Hello friends, today's video is uh, for this assignment cycle September 2024. Uh, this is for semester 1 of all the streams. Uh, subject is business economics. Uh, before we start how uh, we have to write the assignment, maybe we can just get a glimpse. You have two types of answers to be given. Uh, it these theoretical answers and numerical answers. So theoretical answers like where you have all kind of um, explanation, concept, writing, uh, it, it's all just a write-up. So when it comes to numerical, you have been given certain formulas to calculate and find the results and uh, interpret the results. Okay. So here when we come in the theoretical one, introduction part of it will carry 20%. And uh, concept and application related to the question, like sometimes it would have given examples. You can you can put up a explanation of the concept what has been given and then write up some examples, real world examples, or uh, you have some uh, information which is already available somewhere else. So you can take an inspiration out of it and write up your examples here, and then conclusion. Uh, similarly, we we have uh, for the numerical answers is first is understanding and usage of formula. So here it will define like what is the data given and what kind of a formula are we going to use. Then we are going to uh, solve the problem that will carry 60% of it like every time when you are going to solve these problems, write up in a very a detailed step by step like you have to do like um, a addition of like um, left hand side and right hand side so what you can do start with the left hand side additions and then go ahead with the right hand additions with another steps so like this you can uh, make as detailed steps as possible that will carry you good amount of marks and it will also give us a clarity what kind of approach you have taken to solve the problem and finally the results and interpretation of test results so what does that result indicate what does it mean so it would have always been asked like okay interpret the results so write up in that and one more suggestion is always divide your answers in these headings you can start with introduction uh, write around 100 to 200 words in introduction and then go ahead with concept and application so there you try to target 400 to 600 words and then come to conclusion again go ahead with 100 to 200 words so overall what you can do you will cover come close to thousand words 800 to 1000 words is like good amount of uh, um, uh, explanation you would have given there. And then uh, is similarly this one. So here what happens is in the part of understanding and usage initially as part of introduction, you can explain the concept uh, somewhere around uh, write up can come up to 400 to 500 words like explaining the concept, what kind of uh, uh, things you are getting up and all. And then you can write up around 100 words, close to 100, 150 words as a interpretation. So here anyways, you are writing up the formulas and explanation and step by step solving, solving the problem. Okay, let's begin with question one. With the help of the concept of production function, briefly explain the law of variable proportion. Uh, variable proportions and law of returns to scale elaborate your answers by citing real world examples okay so this answers we can find uh, in a textbook that is 7.6 so here comes production in the short run then you have a, a formulas and uh, give a brief explanation about it and then comes your uh, law of variable proportions so this is where you can uh, take up the complete information and write this uh, solution stage one stage two stage three increasing diminishing negative returns and then we will go for next return of scale elaborate your answers and then we'll go for return of scales in 228 Now here is the returns to scale. So returns to scale again you have uh, increasing, decrease, uh, constant and negative uh, diminishing returns. Sorry. So uh, with these examples you can um, you can write down your uh, first part of explanation. Then it is asking you for the examples, real world examples. So what happens is 
um, you can see certain examples has been given while explaining. Mm. Like uh, this, this one, like, uh, mm, yeah. So here certain kind of activities mentioned. You can take this uh, if you're not able to find any kind of a real world example. Um, I suggest you to understand the concept then you will be easily getting that um, answer. But here you can see that it has been already given what kind of an example and how it looks like. So try to explain similarly uh, for any of the example what you will think. Um, uh, it can be um, industry, it can be a service, it can be um, your own experience. So take up certain things and write down here. Okay. So that will that will fetch you more marks and it, it has a possibility of giving scoring high. Okay. Let's move on to question two. Countries are making where every efforts to cut back on their usage of petroleum products, particularly gasoline, in light of the rising cost of crude oil. Results from this will only become apparent over time. To cut down on the usage of private automobiles, the majority of nations are working to increase public transportation systems' popularity. For the reasonable development countries, uh, developed countries, the income elasticity of spending on private vehicle has been calculated to be approximately 2.5. Some nations like India are highly irritated that despite fare reductions, there is no movement towards public transportation. The following describes the user profile of the public transport system. They belong to the middle and low income categories with income elasticity less than 1 and the absolute value of price elasticity also less than 1. With the above given statement, you are required to suggest your point logically as to why the public transport is not becoming popular and why the usage of private vehicle is only continuing to increase. You can build your answer by keeping income elasticity in mind and analyzing it. So this problem is pretty much, I think, uh, everyone's um, uh, personal experience can be put up here and personal suggestions also can be given here. So it's a very open kind of a question. Let's see how we can see the income elasticity explanations in chapter 5.8. So this is the income elasticity in the demand. Um, here, when you are giving this explanation, you will be writing this formula. So sometimes what happens when you write this formula, it shows as the plagiarism. It comes under the plagiarism. Sometimes, not always. Um, but what I suggest is, once you take up this formula, at the end, bottom of it, you can just mention here, this formula has been taken from the textbook, um, NMIMS textbook, and uh, it has been referred for taking this formula. Okay. And uh, in, in the same way, you have to take this. If you can do little modifications in the write-up, it's fine. But otherwise also, it's fine. You can take up this one and uh, write it in your um, assignment. But don't copy-paste. Just take it this and write it in your uh, assignment. Okay. Then types of income elasticity. Um, here comes types of income elasticity demand. Positive. Uh, here again in the positive you have unilateral less than unity uh, unitary then more than unitary negative so these portions you can take up uh, zero okay so once you have taken that now it comes like a challenges in promoting public transport like i i just try to list on some of it you can take up your own way so like perceived uh, inferiority service quality inadequate infrastructure culture preferences quality of service private vehicle connectivity security connections so the security concern what you can do is elaborate these points elaborate uh, points whichever point you are considering elaborate in detail okay Let's move to question three. A corporate in USA, a corporation in the USA that works in the telecommunication industry is called SNLD. Their intention is to join the Indian uh, telecom industry. Prior to entering the Indian market, they would like to examine the market structure. They are doing this in order to determine how much price power they may have in the Indian telecom market. If you were given them advice on the same thing, how would you go about comprehending the structure of the market explain which test or techniques you would choose for determining the market concentration ok 
okay so for this we can go ahead with the um, chapter 9.2 defining the market 72 defining the market this is where it has been taken like geographical competition geographical area and the competition so in the competition again we have to look for next one is measuring the market power 287 here comes measurement of market power and it will help you to understand concentration ratios four firm concentration eight firm concentration and low concentration medium concentration and high concentration so how this will affect and you can see hhi index so this is what uh, the hhi index will define so this is another uh, form of a technique what you uh, what has been used here so these techniques can be um, uh, mentioned that this is what is the technique you are going to use it to solve the uh, or to identify the concentration market concentration okay let's move with the 3b abc limited uh, sought to determine the nature of the relationship between goods a and b specifically if they are complementary or substitute regarding the price and quantity requested for commodity a and b the following information was available the price of a remained unchanged but the price of b dropped from 240 to 200 which increased the demand for a from 3500 to 4000 units determine the cross elasticity of demand between goods a and b and then provide a comment uh, commentary on the relationship between the two goods based on the results so this we can find it in the cross elasticity demand by um, chapter 157 this is the cross elasticity of demand so in the cross elasticity of demand um, so here when we have a five marks question and uh, you have when the information is about theory then you have to write come close to 500 words but when it is in a problem like in this case it has been given as a data so in this case you can write up a very brief i think um, come close to 100 or 200 words and then you can solve the problem that will suffice your uh, uh, requirement okay so the illustration has been given here how the uh, it's similar way we can put up our values and solve this question okay um, thank you so much uh, um, everyone and thank you Madhuri for sharing the questions. All the best to everyone. Thank you.